One of the biggest issues that a home gardener runs into when starting seeds indoors is leggy seedlings. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about what causes leggy seedlings and really some of the things that you can do to avoid them altogether. Let's get into it. All right, now leggy seedlings are plants that are showing signs of stress. It's a seedling's way of telling you that it's not getting the requirements that it needs in order to grow and thrive. And therefore, it'll often get very, very tall. It'll get thin, fall over, and a lot of times just end up dying. For example, these are lettuce seedlings that have been left out, um, not really taken care of. And in result, they have become leggy. Now, a lettuce seedling, when it sprouts, it really should be only about, I'd say, a quarter of an inch tall. These are going upwards of over an inch. And you can see that they're very spindly. They're not really in the best shape um, for survival. So what happens, there's two main things that come with leggy seedlings. The first is that once they get leggy, they become very susceptible to pretty much everything. They're not strong. I mean, even a simple brush with your hand will knock them over. Um, they fall over and they end up either rotting or they're just not strong enough to keep on surviving, um, whether that's from watering on top, fertilizing, um, pests, diseases, other stuff like that. They're just not strong enough to continue to survive and to continue to th um, thrive. The other thing though, is that once a seedling becomes leggy, they start to become very pale in color, or in this case, even almost a complete white uh, within the stems. And that becomes a problem because when a plant is trying to grow, it produces a compound or a chemical called chlorophyll. Now chlorophyll is the natural green pigment in plants that help it to grow, help it to produce energy by photosynthesizing. So if a plant does not contain chlorophyll, there's no way that it can use the sun or indoor purposes, use the grow lights to be able to continue to produce energy or convert that light to energy for the plant to be able to grow. So you really want to make sure that your plants do not get leggy because if they do, they're not going to be able to produce the energy they need to be able to keep growing and surviving. One last thing is that once a seedling gets leggy, it becomes very, very hard for that seedling to push out new top growth because the stems are so thin. There's not a lot of nutrients, uh, water, energy that can be going through that stem and to be able to push out new growth. So it takes a lot of energy and a lot of stress on the plant to even just be able to push out some new leaves to be able to keep growing. So you really, really wanna make sure that your plants are staying compact, they're very thick stem in most cases, depending on what you're growing. Um, and you really wanna make sure that leggy seedlings do not happen. Otherwise, a lot of these things will occur. You're gonna stress your plants out and it's just not a good start in the plant's life. So we're gonna go over some things right now that you can do to prevent them, um, and just some of the things that you could take to make sure that your seedlings are off on the best start possible. All right, the first and really the most common cause of leggy seedlings is inadequate lighting. So a light that is not bright enough. If a light's not bright enough for the plants to be able to grow, the plants will, in response, try to get as close to that light as possible to be able to continue to create energy. So with saying that, they will get that very tall look to them. They'll try to stretch as close as they can to the light. And it's just a plant's natural response to the environment that it's in. Um, if it was in the shade, for example, uh, if you planted something in the shade, it would try to grow around and try to reach for that sun if it's not getting it um, outside in your garden. So, so it's super important that you're using a light that is bright enough for your plants to convert that light to energy. Now a good tip that I have, um, these lights are 2,500 lumens and that is super important. You want a light for your plants to be somewhere in between 2,500 and 5,000 lumens. If it's anything less than 2,500 lumens, the plants often aren't able to keep up. They're not able to use that light efficiently to be able to grow stocky and healthy. So make sure that your lights are in between 2,500 and 5,000 lumens for best results. 
If it's over that, that's okay. Anything over 5,000, you just want to make sure that your lights are higher above the plants. Um, a good tip that whether you're using LED shop lights like these, which you can use, or super expensive commercial grow lights, it really does not matter what the color is, what any of that is, um, is when it comes to a seedling's growth or at the seedling stage, um, because all that the seedling needs, it's not producing fruit, it's not doing anything like that. All it needs is the intensity of the light. If you don't have that intense lighting, they'll become leggy and you'll run into the a lot, a lot of the issues that we talked about earlier in this video. So that kind of leads us into our second problem, which is having your lights too far away from your plants. When your plants first sprout, you wanna make sure that the lights, if it's in between 2,500 and 5,000 lumens, that the lights are about two to three inches from the seedlings. This is super important because a seedling's most, or a plant's most vulnerable stage of legginess is at that first point of breaking the surface. If you don't have the lights right there, when they break that uh, close enough to the plant, they will try to stretch for that lighting and they will become leggy. So it's important that your lights are close enough to the plants to be able to convert that light to energy, but to also make sure that they're not going to respond in a bad way and become leggy. Now, once they get bigger, like these plants, for example, they are a lot bigger. You can see that they're more stalky. Uh, when you brush over them, they stay up. That is a good seedling. That means that it has a thick enough stem to be able to continue to grow, to be able to push energy up, and to be able to keep putting out new growth. Now, when they get big like this, you really can keep them farther away. This is probably about a foot away from the seedlings, and they do perfectly fine. Um, I could even go higher than this. I have some underneath here on this side that are much farther away from the light. It really doesn't matter. One thing that I can say in personal experience is not go by exactly what this video says or other videos say, but on the response of the plants. If your plants are starting to get leggy, move the lights closer to them. If they are staying really small or the leaves are starting to get burnt, um, that's a sign that your lights are too far or too close. Make sure that they're higher above. You really have to go based on what the plant is responding with what the plant seems to do well, the best with, um, and then just go based on that. Don't go based on what all these videos say. Obviously, these are some of the tips that you can use for best success, but when, when it comes down to it, really watch your seedlings, see what they prefer, um, see what they like, and then go based on that. All right, one other thing that goes hand in hand with some of the other lighting tips that we talked about is making sure that you're giving your plants the proper amount of light a day. So a plant, when it first sprouts, can really use the full 24 hours. Keeping your lights on for 24 hours a day for the first three to five days after it breaks the surface. This ensures that your plants aren't going to get super leggy. Like we talked about earlier, it is a plant's most susceptible stage to legginess is when they first break the surface. So leaving them on 24 hours a day completely prevents the possibility of them becoming leggy. Um, I haven't really used this. I know a ton of people that do, or a lot of people that do, because it does do wonders on preventing your seedlings from becoming leggy. Um, but at least keeping them on 16 hours a day for the first few weeks of its life. After that, you can get it down to about 14 hours. But for the first, I'd say two to three weeks after it breaks the surface, you want to give your seedlings at least 16 hours. Super important. Otherwise, if your nights become longer than your days, or if you're not giving um, the plants enough light in the course of a day, the seedlings will become leggy once you turn those lights off. So if you're giving your plants too many hours with not no sun, they will start to stretch, or no light, sorry. They will start to stretch and become leggy, which you don't want. So keeping the lights on for about 16 hours a day for the first few weeks, and then after the third to fourth week, I'd say, um, you can dumb it down to about 14 hours. It will prevent your seedlings from becoming leggy when it comes to the lighting aspect of things. All right, the next tip is not getting your seedlings underneath light in time. So what do I mean by that? When the seedlings first break the surface, if you do not get them underneath your grow lights, within 24 hours, 
they will get leggy super fast. It is, like I said, the most vulnerable stage in a plant's life cycle when it comes to legginess. So for example, I have a flat here. You can see these are just starting to break the surface. They're very tiny. These got underneath the light. You really want to make sure that they get underneath the light really before they even start to break the surface. What I like to do is as soon as I see the little seeds starting to come out, I put them or I hurry up and put them underneath the light. Because if I leave them for even 24 hours um, or a couple days, they will get super leggy super quickly. So that becomes an issue, um, but you really can prevent it from putting them underneath the lights. Another thing when it comes to this that a lot of gardeners do, and even I do sometimes if I run out of grow lights, is trying to fit this whole flat underneath one grow light. You can see here that these lights are, you know, four or five inches across. Um, they're not, no, or they're nowhere near wide enough to cover this whole spot. And the thing with grow lights is they're mainly used to you or put light towards a certain area. You can see even right here that the brightest part is in the middle of these plants, meaning that when you're starting seeds or you're starting to see them germinate, you're really not getting light on the sides of the plants. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you super healthy seedlings in the middle, but a lot of times these outside plants are being wasted because they're trying to reach inwards towards that light. So what I like to do is whether you're using, like I said, an LED grow light, super expensive um, grow lights, whatever you're using, make sure that the light is wide enough for the whole flat. So like I said, these plant or these lights are um, super thin. They're not like wide like the flats are. Um, so I put two of these together when I'm starting seedlings. That way the whole flat is getting adequate lighting. The whole flat is or getting absorbing that light to be able to produce a whole flat of healthy seedlings. I don't want just half a flat of healthy seedlings and the whole outside of it um, super leggy seedlings. It wastes space, wastes time, wastes money. And it's just something that you can prevent altogether if you put the whole flat underneath a whole set of lights. All right, the fourth thing that often causes leggy seedlings is trying to plant too many per cell, not thinning out, and end up becoming crowded like these are. Now the problem with this is when you plant too many per cell and you don't thin out, thinning meaning leaving only one plant per cell, it becomes a problem because all of those plants are trying to grow together. It becomes almost like a jungle. They're all trying to press over the top of each other, not only creating stress, but they're always, or they're not always getting the right lighting. So if you have four plants in here, those in each cell, those four plants per cell are gonna try to push on top of each other, try to get to the surface to where the most light is, often causing leggy seedlings, more stress, more harm towards the plant, and it's just not a good way to start the plant's life off. So always make sure that once you have your seedlings, that you, once they get the first two to three sets of true leaves, somewhere in that range, that you make sure to thin. Otherwise, these plants, like I said, they're gonna try to reach towards that sun, they're gonna get blocked off by the jungle of little tiny seedlings, and it's just not something that you want. So thin out, make sure that you only have one seedling per cell, unless you're using something that's super tiny seeds or that prefers to grow close together. Um, otherwise, your seedlings will become leggy. All right, another big cause of leggy seedlings is the incorrect use of heat mats. Now, a heat mat is used to get seeds to sprout or germinate quickly. Uh, they work wonders for that purpose. And though the seeds love the warm temperatures, things like tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, they love those warm temps that a heat mat provides when trying to sprout. The plants in general, once they do sprout, do not like it at all. So if you keep the seedlings on the heat mat uh, while they're trying or while they're growing, the plants often get very stressed. They do not like the 80, 90, 100 degrees that the heat mat gives off. And a lot of times, like I said, they'll get stressed and they will start to become leggy. They'll start to um, grow too rapidly for their liking uh, because you're providing the warmth of a heat mat and they will become leggy. So a lot of times if you think that a heat mat is something that is really good for your plants um, and you start to see them become leggy 
you're like, what's going on? I'm providing all the heat they need, the lighting. A lot of time it's because they're getting too much heat. So as soon as the seedlings break the surface, get them off the heat mat. They do perfectly fine in 50, 60, 70 degree temperatures indoors. Um, and if you provide a heat mat with them, once they sprout, a lot of times it can put it in the 80, 90, 100 degree range. And it's just something plants do not like. Um, something that will cause stress for the plants, uh, harm for the plants, and something that really does cause leggy seedlings. We just did a whole video on using heat mats correctly and really the big purpose of heat mats uh, when it comes to getting your plants off on the right start. Um, so if that interests you and it's something that you're not um, fully confident in using yet, uh, definitely check out that video. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find it. Um, but it really will help you guys in learning everything there is to know about a heat mat and using them with plants correctly. All right, the last tip that I have for you guys today that is really the most straightforward but can also be the most confusing of them all is just growing the wrong type of plants indoors. Now, when I say this, a lot of plants, they don't necessarily like the warm temperatures of a house or the warm, bright lights that a light provides. Um, things like your cold weather crops, for example, uh, brassicas, so broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, um, lettuces, kale, all of your leafy greens or your cold weather crops, they do not necessarily like the cold or the warm temperatures and the light that comes with growing indoors. So if you're growing these things, a lot of times they will grow so fast because of the warm temperatures, because of the bright lights that they will start to get leggy. Now, it is a sign of stress, but in this case, the plants are just growing too fast um, to be able to keep up. So they will start growing so fast that they just can't um, get enough time to become stocky, to put out leaf growth. And it's just something that a lot of gardeners become stressed over when really it's not even your fault. So if you're growing um, these type of vegetables, lettuces, ca kale, cabbage, broccoli, those type of things, um, and you start to see leggy seedlings, a lot of times there's really nothing you can do. So if you have this problem, um, a lot of times I just recommend starting these outdoors. Like I said, these are cold weather crops. You can really start them outside and get a great harvest that way. Um, you could start them earlier because with the cold temperatures, they will take longer to grow um, and to get established for sizable transplants for your garden. But starting them outside prevents the fact of leggy seedlings. So I'd recommend before starting any types of plants, especially if you're a new gardener, uh, just checking and seeing if the plant you're growing prefers indoor conditions. So the bright lights, um, the warm temperatures of 65 to 75 degrees in most houses, um, and just seeing if a plant can thrive in something like that. A lot of times with some of the plants that we talked about, they really do, they like the shade, they like the colder temperatures um, of spring and fall. So if you're growing something like that and you're not sure about it, but it is frost hardy, it can take a frost, just start them outside. I'm telling you, it will, it, it'll stop a lot of the problems that can occur, especially when it comes to leggy seedlings, just by starting them out outside. Um, you can a lot of times get them off to a better start doing that. Um, and it's just something that I've done uh, and it really does work. All right, and that's pretty much it when it comes to leggy seedlings, uh, some of the things that cause it and what you can do to prevent it. If you are a new gardener or an experienced gardener and you have had leggy seedlings before, put it in the comments what you've done to prevent them um, from becoming leggy or just some of the things that you can do um, or that you've done to help the seedlings get back to health. Um, if you have any tips or tricks, leave them in the comment section below so that it helps other gardeners and myself as well. Um, but if you've experienced leggy seedlings, don't worry, all of us gardeners do. It is a common thing that happens when starting seeds indoors. But I really do hope that today's video helped you guys to know some of the things to look for and some of the things that you can use to really prevent this problem from occurring. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you learned something new, please give it a like. Subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future content coming soon. And make sure you uh, check out our seed shop as well. We've got tons of awesome varieties on there with so many more coming um, later this year in 2024. Huge plans. 
but just some seeds that you can get your hands on to grow as we grow, follow along with us as we do, um, and just grow the best garden that you can. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.